A snooker player's wrist and grip is probably the most vital part of any player's technique. Slightly out and you'll struggle to pot anything, so here's how to get it right. This is Break From Life. Welcome back and if it's your first time watching one of our videos then it's fantastic to have you here. I haven't talked too much in the past about a player's grip and wrist technique. And this is because it's very difficult to improve upon this and not make it worse, but... The way you hold the cue and how that interacts with the movement of your wrist is simply the most important part of your entire technique. If you're not holding the cue in the right place, this can put your wrist at slightly the wrong angle. And just having your wrist in slightly the wrong place can actually throw your entire arm out of line when you bring it through for the shot. And it's difficult to get right because your wrist wasn't actually designed to move smoothly back and forwards like this. Mostly it was meant to twist and rotate, which is great for pulling yourself up and around things, but not too good for cueing in the straight line. To do this, you've got to be able to move the cue smoothly through your fingers, and this is vital because... Generally speaking, your arm will follow your grip. So if your grip's in the right place, then your arm will be moving backwards and forwards straight, and then so will your cue. So let's look at the best way you can grip the cue. After we visit David Davies in Lundudno in North Wales. Now everybody's hand and wrist is different, so the way you hold the cue when you pick it up off the table is probably what's right for you. If there is a standard grip, it's to wrap your hand around the cue like that, and then keep all of that bit of your arm and your wrist straight. Ideally you want the cue tight in your hand, but with the loosest grip possible. This will help you keep the cue parallel to the table, and when you deliver it you want to squeeze tighter and tighter all the way through the shot. But you only want to increase this to a firm grip, nothing tighter. It's also vital when you pull your cue back that it does exactly the same thing, or the complete opposite depending on how you want to look at it, as when you play the shot. But this doesn't work for everybody. If I was to try to use the exact technique I've just explained, and believe me I have, then I would really, really struggle. I find I can't deliver the cue anywhere near straight unless I've got my wrist out at this angle, and there's a bit of a gap between my hand and the top of my cue. Now this isn't exactly ideal, but the thing is, if I don't have that small gap between my hand and my cue, and my wrist doesn't come out to the side that, like that slightly, then the reality is I struggle to pot anything. You find these are the areas where everybody's slightly different. To have a look at what my cue action's doing, I'm using my camera to film along the line of my cue. But you can easily do this with a mobile phone if you can find a good place to prop it up. So I played a few shots so I could observe part of my technique that I never get the chance to see. And with only three separate shots, it was obvious that I was doing something that could be a problem, or certainly could be improved upon. But while I'm analysing that, we can have a look on the map at finding Josh Stacey in Christchurch, New Zealand. What I noticed is I was very slightly rotating the cue to the right as I delivered it. This meant I could be very slightly cueing across the ball as I played every shot. But what was more surprising is what happened when I tried to fix it. The more I tried to stop rotating my cue, the more my elbow moved over to the left hand side and my wrist out to the right. Despite the fact I knew exactly what the problem was, I was only making things worse, not better. Can't stress enough the dangers involved in changing something like this, because even if you get the smallest thing wrong, this could result in you not being able to pot even the simplest of shots. The majority of people who saw this image would say that my elbow was probably a little bit too far over to the left and my wrist was stuck out a little bit too much, but it won't make that much difference. But in trying to make something better, I've just exaggerated these two things. And even if I do improve something, I'm going to struggle because I'm in a much worse position here. I was still rotating it, but it meant I was in the wrong place to start off with. Luckily, I had a solution to this problem, but it was going to take a lot of time and a lot of practice. So let's use that time to find Narav in Nairobi in Kenya. Okay, here's what I've done, and believe me, it hasn't been easy. To start off with, I've got this board pen and a piece of masking tape, and I've marked on my cue a straight line so I could see if I was rotating the cue through the shot or not. I then started with a line at the top, 
and played the shot without really thinking about the line and then had a look where it was and I noticed I rotated the cue round about the same amount every single time and no matter what I did I couldn't prevent it from doing this. So I started cueing along the bulk line and trying to keep it straight like that and I could do it but when it came to playing the actual shot I'd rotate it again. So what did I do? Well I managed to take my elbow which was in this position and move it above my cue into this position and all of a sudden I was able to deliver the cue without rotating it. Now this didn't mean that I was going to deliver the cue straight every time, this just meant I could deliver the cue straight every time. And the only way I could work this out was to see if the line I had on the top of my cue was still there after I'd played the shot. What's absolutely vital is you don't try to do this during the shot, especially when you just change your technique like this, you need to really focus on lining the shot up. If I hadn't have done this, I wouldn't have been able to get used to cueing the ball straight in this way. Something else that players will often get wrong when they're learning to deliver the cue in a slightly different way is they'll tense up their entire body or parts of their body. This is because you try to hold yourself exactly where you need to be and as I showed earlier quite often you can be holding yourself in exactly the wrong position. Whatever you do you need to be able to play the shot with all your muscles relaxed. If you don't then after a while this can easily cause you neck and back pain and it's not unusual if you continue to do this to get a slight headache. This may sound silly but if you're experiencing any of this the technique you're using simply isn't right for you. So even if it's not as good try to play in a way that feels natural. So it's a few days later and the changes I've made do seem to have actually worked. It is worth checking every now and again because things can go wrong day to day. Generally I seem to be queuing a lot lot straighter although I'm not fully used to this yet so I'm a little bit inconsistent still. I'm not yet able to produce as much spin on the cue ball as I normally would but I'm sure this will change as I get used to this technique. So have a look at these videos if you want to find out what I'm going to be doing to help increase my cue power or find out more about how to cue the ball straight. And remember don't just watch play and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel and visit the website. See you later.